Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mioni of Ace Games TV, and today I'm going to be playing a game that I've been wanting to play for, I don't know, about three years now. This is none other than Arcage. This is the Korean release client, uh, which I have gained access to with uh, various methods. And, um,. And we're going to play this game, we're going to show you a bit about it, and I'm going to do a bit of a live playthrough and then cut it together afterwards with a bit of post-editing. I'm going to show you what the game's like. So here, I'm actually on the server select screen here, so I'm going to select um, one of the servers, probably the top one we'll go for. Um, I'm not sure what any of those symbols mean at all. But the first thing, obviously, is going to be character creation. So we're going to have a look at character creation, the sort of things you can go through. Um, my body appears to be missing that's um an issue already and oh dear god um yeah i'm gonna have to censor that <laughs> so apparently it renders uh, the female body um in, in its entirety um i'm not sure what's going on here i might have to re oh there we go right apparently because i've just downloaded this game there's a bit of pop in um, and the models hadn't loaded properly, so we're, we're going to ignore what happened there. So uh, as you can see, there's some jiggle physics on these characters, and from what I can see, there's human, different human -y elfy people, Chinese people, and then cat people as the selected races that you can have, and you can have female or male variants of them. Obviously, there's dialogue and passives, um, racial abilities that come with these that obviously I can't um, translate for you, but those of there and basically we're going to go off of uh, looks when we create something today so I'm not sure I want to be one of these cat people I liked the Mikote in Final Fantasy 14 but these guys look a little bit weird probably a little too furry honestly um, they're even called the fairy um, that's probably bad translation but I'm not sure why that bits in English but the fairy or the furry um, yeah I'm not gonna go for one of those However, she looks pretty cool. Uh, she's a nice little Asian lady. She appears to be a lot shorter than everyone else. Um, and the male version's like a, well, it looks a bit like a child. Um, we're going to go for one of these, I think, the Hari Haran. So there are three different continents, and I believe you start uh, on the two, a choice of two continents. And uh, Hari Hara and the one to the, um, the far west. So the eastern continent is where we're going to be starting. So we're going to look at the basics of character creation here. Um, there's a few bits of jiggle physics. You have a selection of various uh, preset um, hair here. So we have various pages of presets, the pigtails, the long hair, all that. So we're going to try and make something a little Tifa-esque out of Final Fantasy VII. Go for that sort of thing. Nice sort of black hair. Oh my god, I'm not sure what the bow thing is there. but um, Something... Oh, I like that. I like how the ponytail is, is kind of its own thing. It doesn't clip through the armor. So, Arcage is one of the games uh, using CryEngine 3, um, which seems like a bit heavy-handed going in with that much technology. Um, I don't know, it's sort of the standard for new Fancy Pants uh, Asian MMOs now, is uh, to use a CryEngine or the Unreal Engine um, sort of graphics. And... Honestly, we're going to see some really interesting character design options here. There's all different shades and different colours you can pick from here and different uh, facial features, things like that. That looks pretty good. Um, I think we'll go with a longer straight one there. That'll do. She looks pretty nice. Um, but we're not going to mess around too long in this character creation because a lot of people are going to get bored of this. Um, but you can have all sorts of different hair look. You can get blonde, red. Um, I want a nice black colour really. You can have the sort of lightning-esque um, bright pink there. Um, very nice grey. I'm not sure why you'd want grey hair, actually. That's a bit weird. There we go. There's the black. That's like slate black. There's like green and then other colours of blue. But yeah, we're going to go for the solid black because it, you know, looks the best in my opinion. So then we've got different eye shapes and uh, of course uh, eyebrows come with those. So you have different shaped eyebrows and different animations that go with those. So you can tweak that around, and I'm sure on the right side there, there are different things you can change with the um, moving sliders around to change the size of features as well. So we've got quite an in-depth character creation tool here. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm going to skip past a lot of this now and go straight back into the game because uh, that's obviously something you want to see and we're not going to spend forever whilst I pick a different shade of eye colour. Okay, so the next screen before we actually get into the game is choosing a class. Now there are four major archetype classes, as you may know, which aren't going to come as any surprise. They are Warrior, Mage, Priest and Ranger. Now these options aren't really exciting or surprising to anybody who's played an MMORPG before and are quite standard. However, the character creation and the character line of what that class is is completely up to you. And I say that because there are a choice of three schools that you can pick. Now, imagine schools as talent trees, okay, from early World of Warcraft or early MMORPGs where you had a choice of putting points into different trees, right? Like So retribution, protection, or healing, for example, for a paladin in WoW, right? But in this game, you have a choice of three schools that you can pick from ten schools total, right? So out of any ten of these schools, I can pick three of them to go with that class. And I can obviously uh, take points out of them in the future and respec, obviously. Um, so it adds a lot more hybridity. And a lot of games try and uh, stray away from the hybrid sort of uh, development of characters. And this is a lot more like a Skyrim-esque take on... Um, choice of abilities and things so for example i could play a mage and i could choose the combat illusion and adamant schools okay these are three schools that i've used as an example now the combat school is all about using melee swords weaponry at close range and you get abilities from putting your points into that tree so i'll get vandalise slash for example which is um, hits the enemy four times in a row so it's combo building so i'd be a mage but i'd be at melee range doing melee damage then I could choose the illusion one. So this is all about um, obviously summoning things, um, uh, disappearing from the enemy, getting behind them, a little bit like a shadow stepping rogue. And then I could choose adamant, for example, uh, which is a, a tanking school, believe it or not. Now, this doesn't necessarily make me a very good fireballing mage, you know, my fireballs or whatever, my abilities, my spells aren't going to be as powerful as a mage who had chosen like Will, for example, or any of the other uh, schools that empower magic. However, I would have the advancement of basically proficiency in close range combat, illusion and stuff. So it's really up to you what your character is. It's a lot more of a, like I said, a Skyrim approach to specking and creating a character in an MMORPG world. So we're going to see how well that works. Uh, we're going to be playing a melee mixed with a ranger abilities with a bow type of priest today and we're going to see how well that works now obviously i'm not going to be as powerful as um, a melee warrior for example or anything like that but we're going to see how well it works and of course this is going to be a live playthrough uh, with my opinions as we go through this so uh, uh, another thing i should mention here is there's horrible black borders around the screen those will disappear when we're in game don't worry it's because the resolution on the character select screen and before that is uh, it's just some really weird resolution that's fixed for some reason. But uh, I managed to fix it in-game. So without further ado, let's name this character Mioni and hop in to the world of Harihara or the continent of Harihara. Alright, so here we go. It's finished loading. Well, it's 100% at least. Um, got some dragons in the background there on our loading screen. Oh, and here we go. WSD. Yep, so we've got our sort of tutorial that we're going to have to turn off. Now, I'm not really going to uh, struggle too much with translation in this game because it is a typical uh, MMORPG and I've played a lot of Asian ones, so um, it's going to be interesting to see what differences there are in a game. Oh, so I press that and it brings up the, uh, the graphics menu. Um, or at least I think it's the graphics menu, I think it is, yeah. So I don't know what graphics setting we're on, and we're not going to mess around too much with settings, uh, because I really don't have the time to do that. But my character looks pretty cool. It is certainly a more high fidelity than World of Warcraft, because, well, you know, that game's over eight years old, well, over ten years old now, so what do you expect? And that bloke just turned into a bat. So I've got this basic ability here. I presume that's a heal. Um, it appears to be a heal. Now, I know for a fact that heals and things, uh, when you're targeting an enemy, will actually damage the enemy with that same ability. 
uh, as well as if you targeted yourself it would heal you. So abilities in this game do have two uses depending on what your target is, which basically means uh, healing classes, for example, like this one, um, are going to have a lot more fun and it's going to be easier to level up, which I think is a brilliant idea, uh, something in World of Warcraft that I wish they had added. So as we look at the map here, we've got our generic uh, sort of map here. It looks like a little basin we're in. We're starting near the coast in this desert. This guy's talking about green quests and yellow quests. I presume green quests are repeatables or something like that. What does he want? He's very weird and he's wearing a cool hat. So these are the rewards. I'm going to get 420 of something and then obviously some copper. Um, we can just press F. And this woman's telling us about quest locations and the quest markers. So in this game, instead of you having to track things all the time through your map, you actually have a little symbol that goes beneath your feet. Uh, well, numerous symbols actually, which are, look like miniature houses or arrows with different colours with a number on them. And the number corresponds to the quest number in your log. So that way you can see where a quest objective is by simply looking under your feet. And when there's multiple quests... Um, that thing is just to... I think it gives you a bonus to speed. Uh, yeah, I am actually getting a buff. I believe. Oh, I wish this woman had stopped talking. Yes, yeah, so this thing increases... Uh, gives me like a sprint bonus for a few seconds, I think. Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, as I was saying, like the quest marker objective here, number one on the floor, is telling me where my quest objective is, which is down here at this bloke. So when there's multiple quests, uh, it will point all the different directions with a colour and a number, uh, basically, label on that. Which is a really cool idea, again. Um, I think there's some add-ons in WoW that are like that. I'm not really going to be able to read any of these quests, obviously. Um, so I'm going to only be able to use my knowledge of previous MMOs to work this out. And there's a dog here. Now this is a Korean game. I'm not sure there should be a dog here, buddy. Um, you, you might want to run away. Um, of course, I'm playing on the fact that Koreans like to eat dogs. You see, as I just walked through that bush, the bush parted. So this quest, it seems I've got to pick up um, these large pears? Co coconut pear things? I can pick up more than one. Which is unusual. Another thing worth noting, actually, as I hand this quest in, as this bloke over here, there's other NPCs here, um, is that if you acquire more quest items than are necessary for that quest objective, uh, a lot of the time in this game, they will allow you to basically uh, keep those items and then turn in the quest again, which is a very Asian way in Asian MMOs, essentially. The idea is that somebody should be able to grind their way to max level by killing monsters. And a lot of Korean players actually enjoy doing that. It's the norm to do that. So to encourage people to play the way that they want, not only do quest objectives allow you to hand them in normally and you can just level through that, but you can also repeatedly turn in the quest objective items that you would get from killing the monsters um, repeatedly for for however long you want, obviously. Which is a really cool idea and is something I'd like to see more of, actually, in games like WoW. Because sometimes you feel like grinding. Grinding isn't too bad. So we're going to try out some combat now. Um, now, as you can see, I'm wielding a wand, a bow, a shield, and obviously magic. Um, I'm going to mine this rock here for the quest. Or at least I think it's for the quest. Yeah, it is, right. So I need to mine three of these. Um, it says one out of three. Fortunately, numbers don't need to be translated. Now she's telling me about the aggressive nature of mobs. When they're orange, they're not aggressive. They're passive. When they're red, they are aggressive and will aggro to you. So this guy was orange. I could have walked straight past him. So he's at close range now. So we're going to hit him with our one ability, which is our auto attack. When you hit it once, it uh, will continuously cast this. I don't have to press it again. I also have uh, the three button, which is a heal, uh, which... Shut up, woman. Seriously, stop. Stop talking. She's telling me about loot and experience, so I'm 62% of the way through this. So as I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted, oh my god. Are you going to stop talking, please? Please? Oh my god. Stop. It's telling me I can pick up items by using the F key 
Uh, well, the G key loots singular items, means I can choose from them. Pressing F is auto loot, which is a feature in many other games. So as I was saying, when you target a creature, you can obviously press an ability that would otherwise heal you if you were targeting yourself, but it would cause damage to the enemy. But for now, we're just going to use our bow and our melee attack and bring this down. Um, and I'm going to cut through a lot of this. Now, obviously, melee combat and combat in general isn't that exciting so far, but that's not really the strengths of Arcage, in my opinion. And we're going to sort of look into the, the strengths of the game as we go. But this stuff is just grinding. And honestly, I feel that we should cut to something more exciting. So let's do so. All right, so I've completed that quest, or at least mine the three nodes that were necessary for handing in these quests, uh, or quest in particular now. And we're going to go hand this in, and we should level up. We should ding from this, because we're at like 99% of the way through the level. So give me that experience, bro. Here we go, we have leveled up. We press this button, uh, or we can usually press a, I think it's K, you bring up this. This is where you put your points. Uh, at the moment, we can only put them into our main class abilities until obviously we unlock the other trees. Um, when we, you know, reach an underscores level, I can't remember what it is. I'll have to read up um, to obviously put points into other things. But it doesn't stop us from wielding a weapon at close range, doing what we're doing. So there are other tabs there, including like emotes and stuff, which we'll look at later on in probably another video. But uh, let's get back to questing and move on to something exciting. I just wanted to show you what the talent tree looked like uh, before we continue. Alright, so I'm on a quest here. We're trying to save a dog. A bloke has, well, a, a kid has lost his dog. Uh, probably been eaten by Koreans, uh, or about to be eaten by Koreans. So we're, we're going down here to save the dog, or at least try and find the remains of it. So these little buggers have, uh, have something to do with this. I presume the quest, uh, from what I can tell, is there was a cart coming through a peaceful area. These bandits came out of nowhere, knocked over the cart. In fact, the cart's over there. And the dog was missing as they ran for refuge. And apparently the dog is still alive. What are you doing here, bro? Help me. They're trying to eat me. Me only, you've got to save me, mate. Um, well, if I bring you back to them, surely they'll just eat you, buddy. Um, Do what you can. Well... Your owner is kind of dead here, and, uh, yeah. Oh, he's not dead. He's alive. Oh, he's dead again. Okay, well, I don't know what that is, but... Oh, is that a new rank of spell? Oh, damn. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sure that upgrades naturally. Well, hmm. Or is it just replaced? I think that's an extra rank of that ability. I don't know. We'll see. I think it's a more powerful rank of. I'm not sure how ranks work in this game. I haven't quite worked that out yet. But, uh, yeah. So let's buff ourselves here and, uh, well, I just pressed heal. Put away our weapon and go back to town to inform said person of his dog's surviving. I should really bring the dog with me, but, you know, terrible quest, uh, quest, uh, quest delivery person I am. <laughs> Just gonna leave a dog there. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so we're in the town. Um, as you can see here, one and two. Quest one is to go and deliver the uh, the news of the dog, I believe, and two is to talk to someone else. And here he is. What? That's the dog. The dog's back. Thank you for bringing back our puppy. It's now back on the menu. Yay! A man died, but at least our shipment of dog meat. Returned to the village. It would have been a terrible day if we were just to eat ramen. Now we have the sustenance that we ordered from the province. Now I can last rest my friends to rest and eat my dog. Thank you very much, Beauty. You have done me much service. Little Rufus. We'll make a fine sandwich. 